Lajedo Jipai Matus, located within modern-day Brazil, is an incredible ancient site that, just like Gornia Shoria within Russia, is of such a tremendous age, and the stones incorporated into its structure are of such a huge size, that mainstream academics passionately attest to the site being merely geological. However, the megalithic wall located at the site, which is uncannily similar to many others, each claimed as geological. Yet the symmetry in the construction, the fact that the blocks are placed in what we now call stretcher courses, is a technique which can be seen within brick-built buildings all over the world. This unnatural, repetitive technique makes the walls the strongest possible, using single-layer blocks to build with. It is highly unlikely that this repeating pattern would appear naturally. However, there are many other features at the site that not only prove it was indeed an ancient settlement, now all but eroded back to nature, dolmens of a similar age which litter the site are arguably proof of an artificial origin, exposing what we have long claimed to have been a reality, that a now hidden civilization's ruins are being actively dismissed as nothing more than geological features. The site is approximately 1.5 square kilometers and is home to about 100 large rounded stones, each weighing up to 45 tons. Some of these stones have been placed upon tiny base stones, and others have seemingly been hollowed out from the base, making what is unquestionably some of the most intriguing ancient dolmens to be found anywhere on Earth. According to geologists who have explored the site, yet have seemingly ignored the evidence to suggest that many of these stones have artificial origins, the rock formation is the result of soil wear over millions of years due to natural cracks and large temperature variations. As aforementioned, the most curious and seemingly most famous block is the hollowed-out dolmen, which is commonly known as the helmet stone. Additionally, along with the Neolithic dolmens which litter the site, on some of the stones there are cave paintings, which are attributed to the Kareri Indians who lived in the region about 12,000 years ago. Legend has it that later, the site became the home of someone known as the Hermit Healer, an individual claimed to have lived in the region in around the 18th century. Many people from this area sought his consult, yet any concrete evidence as to who this individual was, or what they were capable of, has eluded modern understandings. We feel that due to the stretcher courses found within the megalithic wall, currently claimed as a natural formation, along with the evidence at the site of Neolithic dolmens, with surviving art, which also dates from this era, are all compelling proofs of an artificial, advanced, yet ancient and now hidden origin. Who built Legedo Jepai Matus? What was the site's original purpose? Just how old is Legedo Jepai Matus? Thankfully, the more people who explore the site and collect and compile photographic studies, the closer we will get to finally answering these burning questions regarding our past. It is a site which we find highly compelling. Many of the most ancient stone structures we cover here upon our channel, whose origins undoubtedly span far back into Earth's antiquity, in our experience are often, unfortunately, due to the rigid, unchanging conclusions set forth in regards to academic history just over a century ago, will not only encounter reoccurring anomalies, suspiciously precise stone cuts, unexplainable by any of our lesser capable yet institutionally permitted ancestors with whatever said civilization were to equip with, yet regardless and rather arrogantly refuse to budge in terms of the official tale of events. This then means that anyone with critical thinking skills will continually and often come across feats of ancient engineering somehow accomplished by said people, enormous and perfectly refined stone carvings that, according to, and as a result of, academic institutions' reluctance to budge must be explained away as having, somehow, once been cut and created with tools of a soft metal. Yet in reality, this is simply an impossibility. It is a lie only possible on paper, yet this lie is mass-printed all over our planet. It is in Mystery History's opinion that these advanced 
and thus inexplicable features which litter our videos in abundance are each and all clear evidence of a far more advanced yet far more ancient and thus lost civilization. Additionally, another reoccurring theme anyone exploring this confusing, enigmatic, and although little shared, ever-growing list of ancient, unexplainable structures, no funded individual dare attempt to explain the methodology of said build but will find that they are, instead, extremely eager to willingly and immorally seal the fate of these marvelous buildings' legacy, condemning them to the ever-growing list we like to call the label of the tomb. A ruthless, willing, and well-funded army of researchers, tasked with exploring any archaeology from a very specific time period, thus we posit any re-inhabitation of said site's archaeology is used nearly always absent an explanation as to how they built said buildings, depending the construction on whom is most convenient. An eventual attribution for all of these exquisite and quite possibly incredible important historical relics as simply tombs. We have in the past touched upon false doors, claimed witchcraft, which seemingly permeated all ancient civilizations worldwide from littering the 1,000-ton-plus toppled obelisk of Aksum, exposing the advanced ruins in Ethiopia, but also the Giza Plateau, among countless other locations on Earth, seemingly spanning many lost civilizations' ruins. And the site which is the focus of this video, we feel, is one of the most awe-inspiring false doors on Earth. When it comes to false doors, a sheer mountain side carved away perfectly not only creating a tomb of master stonework in a time of history, when this should have simply been impossible. Its false door, however, proof of its far greater age, leading into some incredible landscape, makes it a site which undoubtedly adds intrigue to the mystery of the false door, and whether we will ever unlock its fullest potentials. We previously covered one in Peru in a subject-specific film. Link will be at the end. Local legend claimed it was once a portal. It is clearly a false door, as seen all over the world, just like that of Axum, seemingly laser-cut into the hillside. What we found highly compelling, however, was that it had been cut into the only mountainside in all of Peru to have possessed an extremely rare earth element in the stone, which we now use in high-end transmission of radio, sound, and light waves. Every day, we get closer and closer to finally understanding what these doors were. Kapilikea Rock Tomb is not only an extraordinarily well-located ruin, located in Kirkdilim, 27 kilometers north of Churum, Turkey, on a rocky, steep, rough-formed, thus hard bedrock. It is clearly a relic of one of the lost civilizations we have long been studying, not only due to the precision of the stone cut, the masterful choice of location, but also the use of the false door, in our opinion, proves beyond doubt that this ruin was made by the same lost civilization or civilizations as we are currently pursuing an identity and a legacy for here upon our channel. A civilization once capable of moving and building with 1,000 plus ton megalithic stones, possibly even the builders of or the descendants of the true group of people responsible for the Great Pyramids themselves. Many things which do not add up are often overlooked or dismissed. But in our experience, the ancient ruins never lie if you let them tell the story and explore said relics with a quest to understand what they may still be able to tell us. It does not matter what others may claim, for as we know, the truth will always prevail. And that is something we find highly compelling. The Giant's Causeway, located within Northern Ireland, it is claimed as a natural formation, the results of a peculiar ancient volcanic fissure eruption. An array of about 40,000 suspiciously, artificially appearing interlocking basalt columns, precisely located in County Antrim, upon the northern coast of Northern Ireland. Although the causeway was named, quote, the fourth greatest natural wonder in the UK, end quote. There is another, more controversial, and many others insist a far more intriguing theory for how the causeway came into being. Declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1986, 
a national nature reserve in 1987 by the Department of the Environment for Northern Ireland. However, according to local legend, the columns are instead the remains of a once artificially built structure, once built by ancient giants. The story states that the Irish giant, Fionn Mac Camel, was challenged to a duel by a Scottish giant known as Benadonner. Fionn supposedly accepted this challenge and built the causeway so that the two giants could collide in battle. In one version, Fionn defeats Benadonner. In another, Fionn hides from Benadonner when he realizes that Fionn is much bigger than he. Predictably, due to the age of the causeway and said subsequent legends, variants have arose over the ages. Yet interestingly, the legends have survived and indeed persisted as a possible explanation for the causeway's existence. Another variant, telling of Fionn's wife, disguising Fionn as an infant, tucking him in a cradle. It continues that Benadonner, according to said legend, sees the size of the baby, perceiving it not to be Fionn, but that he instead must have been its father and that Fionn must be of gigantic proportions. He fled back to Scotland, destroying the causeway behind him, so that Fionn would be unable to chase him across the sea. The majority of the columns are hexagonal in shape. Some columns, however, possess four, five, seven, or even eight angled sides, the tallest being 12 meters, created from pure solidified lava. Was the causeway, as the legends tell, once created by ancient giants? Or is it merely a curiously artificial-looking natural formation? Regardless, we find Giant's Causeway, and indeed its attached legends, highly compelling. Throughout our time researching ancient antiquities, we have stumbled across many anomalies which, to this day, the questions we have raised regarding these sites have yet to be satisfactorily answered by anyone. How did ancient, seemingly post-cataclysmic civilizations accomplish such feats of ancient engineering? Not only are there countless ancient structures found on nearly every continent on Earth that are beyond modern capabilities, but the way in which they were liberated from the quarries and bedrock in which they were sourced, often many miles away, remains a burning question. Furthermore, the clues to these now lost techniques the knowledge and indeed tools used to create these monstrous megaliths, the fingerprints of these now long forgotten activities still remain all over the hard granites once selected and used. No matter the geographical separation many of these sites share, it seems was not an issue, and they not only match, but as we have previously postulated based on said data, would appear to have been created with not only the same tools and techniques, but by a civilization whose tentacles far outstretch modern paradigms in regards to a single super-civilization having once been responsible for these extraordinary acts of ancient engineering. How can we continue to believe such sites were the work of academically shared, subsequently studied, in-depth, and thus proven civilizations which we now know to have been incapable of such feats. The unfinished obelisk of Aswan, the megaliths of Yangshan Quarry, the polygonal astonishing feats of the mountaintop temples of Peru, and so on, all share the same scars upon the weather-resistant rocks used in said structures. India, China, Peru, Egypt, and so on, yet interestingly, Different stone-cutting techniques are found upon different locations, yet seemingly coalesce within Aswan Quarry and other structures such as the Great Pyramids within Egypt. Diagonally cut stones, such as those within Baalbek and much further afield, are present within this quarry within Egypt. However, what makes the location of these massive pyramids special is that from the data, the evidence we have gathered, the structures were either built before said civilizations arrived and subsequently flourished upon our planet, but that these enormous structures were shared, possibly even an intercontinentally shared accomplishment achieved by not one, but many ancient super-civilizations, which, it would appear, were even more capable than that of modern man. These butter-cut stones, 
such as the techniques seemingly used upon the abandoned obelisk of Aswan, are shared with many other sites, protuberances found within Peru and many other polygonal sites, are also present upon the pyramids, yet are seemingly much later additions. However, they are not only present on ruins around the world also, but the tool marks we have used to separate these sites are present within Egypt in abundance. The only other place we have witnessed such shared anomalies is Bazda Caves in Turkey, used by us to not only identify these techniques, but to pinpoint which lost civilization were where, and thanks to the pyramids, it would seem when. They not only share these marks, which are present all over structures across the world, but are only utilized in their fullest upon these two sites, so far discovered. Only shared at these particular sites and nowhere else found so far. However, interestingly, Baalbek seems to also share protuberances with other polygonal sites, but also possesses curious semicircular crescent-shaped tool marks across its biggest megaliths, as if a less accomplished tool than that used, we would postulate later, after these techniques were mastered, as found within Aswan, Sacsayhuaman, and many other apparently more advanced ruins found elsewhere on Earth. Who were these ancient people? How did they accomplish such astonishing feats of ancient engineering? We not only find the pursuit of answers to such questions incredibly important to the development of our knowledge in regard to our origins, but is a quest we will always find highly compelling. Throughout our research of ancient antiquities, we have stumbled upon countless mysteries whose creation and often technique or technology used to lift them, which remain complete enigmas to modern academia. Seemingly impossible ancient megaliths litter this earth, some a few mere tons, such as a lintel within the treasure of Atreus, although it must be noted that although the lintel be only a few tons in weight, the treasury is the oldest and indeed largest standing dome structure upon this earth, and regardless of it being the largest by a long chalk, its walls were once somehow finished like glass. This glass finish was also found and actually still be seen within the Grand Gallery within the Great Pyramid of Giza, a pyramid which we have previously exposed as not only having casing stones of a much younger age, but the exoskeleton, just like the stones used in the creation of the walls of the Grand Gallery, many hundreds if not thousands of tons in weight still exhibiting these ancient civilizations' ability for perfection. Other ruins which have also lay abandoned for unknown millennia still contain unexplainable megaliths – Baalbek, Jordan, Japan, the UK, Easter Island, Polynesia, Peru, Chile, Italy, the list goes on. All these countries still possess stone megaliths, which even modern machinery we would struggle to work with. Many structures, however, we still could not recreate. We could not move or place such stones with such incredible accuracy. In our opinion, there is overwhelming combining complementing factors which link an ancient civilization's worldwide reach, where not only did they share wisdom of stone working, fort and temple building, astronomy knowledge of our orrery, their technologies, among many yet unknowns which were somehow lost to history. This vanishing event can even be seen within their megalithic activity. El Gigante on Easter Island, which would have been the largest of these ancient Moai, suddenly abandoned, which due to the island's incredibly geographically remote location, we perceive is simply evidence of the breadth of this catastrophe.
the abandoned obelisk Aswan, provided by Chris Dunn's work, to have not been abandoned due to a crack discovered, but that this was post-abandonment. Yet more proof we feel of this catastrophic event, Yangshan Quarry also suddenly abandoned. These all could be seen as supporting evidence of a sudden disappearance of this once incredible civilization. Yet regardless, to unravel and understand a civilization capable of such a wonders as Kalish Temple, one which seemingly simply vanished, is a pursuit we find highly compelling.